Well, the American Revolution was really important, uh, obviously, to American history, but also to Canadian history. I think um, one of the first things we have to realize is that the American Revolution was not just a war between the Americans and the British. It was also a war between Americans. So we have a patriot, patriot revolutionary force, but we also have a really significant proportion of the population who were loyalist and who were vehemently opposed to this idea of seceding um, from Great Britain. And this was, it was a bitter civil war. Um, the loyalists were, you know, their property was confiscated. Um, sometimes their houses were burned. They were sometimes run out of town. And this was really heated argument, passions on both sides. Um, this has a big impact both in the war and in the long term. So even at the beginning of the, of the revolution, um, there was some loyalist exodus. So the British force had been in Boston but they had to evacuate. And when they evacuated from Boston to Halifax, a number of Loyalist families came with them. There they settled temporarily in Nova Scotia and then a lot of them went on to Great Britain. But what we also see is Loyalists moving during the war to um, what was then Quebec and also the Niagara region. And they were doing this because a lot of the Loyalists then formed uh, military units. And there they would, a lot of them were based in Quebec and then would make forays into um, sort of New York um, and the regions below the border. So about 50 Loyalist units ended up operating in that area and they brought their families with them. So we do see Loyalists actually leaving the country during the war. But the big exodus happens with the peace treaty in 1783. The fighting stopped in North America in 1781, um, but the British had a couple of posts that they kept open basically to make sure that the Loyalists had some measure of protection because as I said, you know, tempers were heated and passions were high and there was, you know, a lot of animosity between these two groups. So they kept these ports open and at the end of the war, the, the one place that was still open was New York City, which the British held under Sir Guy Carlton again, who keeps popping up. So they kept these open until the end of the war and thousands then were evacuated by the boatloads. Um, most of these went to Nova Scotia and what would later become New Brunswick. Um, so they were families, men, women, children, um, all different backgrounds too, and that's the other thing we have to keep in mind. We had black loyalists, um, a lot of former slaves who'd been assured protection by the Br British government. Um, so they were on these boats, on, on the last boats, I think, too. Um, but there were, so people of Anglican, Anglo background, people of German background, a lot of minorities ended up being uh, remaining loyal to the British government because they thought they would have more protection. So boatloads of people, thousands, um, going to Nova Scotia and what would later then become New Brunswick. So many loyalists ended up in Nova Scotia that they ended up forming a new province. The other sort of migration path, if you want to think about it that way, was to the Niagara region and Quebec province and what would later become uh, Upper Canada, which was now Ontario. So huge numbers, thousands, also went overland, often along wilderness trails by sort of families and small groups, but a lot of them from 1783 on um, continued this sort of migration path. Um, huge numbers settled there. Some of them settled by regiments, these loyalist regiments that had served during the war. And the outcome of this for Canadian history is that you know, major portions of Canada were settled primarily by these loyalists. So they had a very different take on the American Revolution. And we do see long-term animosity then between the loyalists who ended up setting in Canada and this, you know, the victorious Americans and the patriots in what would become the United States. And this we would see then uh, manifest in the War of 1812 where a lot of the loyalists living in Canada thought, well, maybe the revolution can be reversed or at the very least we're gonna take some revenge. Um, the American forces invaded Canada and a lot of the defense of the, of the country was done by people from loyalist families. So there was again, that's still that animosity and bitterness between the two groups who never really thought that the, you know, the conflict had quite ended. There was still a lot of unfinished business, I think. 